So I'm sure a lot of you have heard and even seen the latest Facebook scandal where ex-employee Francis Hagen revealed concerning evidence that Facebook operates in ways which conflict with the well-being of their users. And for some, and a lot of people, I think this was not new news. This is something that people have known for a very long period of time that Facebook uh, isn't necessarily acting in the best interest of the users on its platform. But as most of you may know, I'm a shareholder in Facebook and have been very bullish on the company's future prospects for some time now. And I've even made some videos on Facebook previously outlining my investment thesis. So the question here is, as a shareholder of this business, how should we perceive the recent whistleblower scandal and what will the potential medium to long-term implications be for, for Facebook and then in turn, Facebook's stock? So we're going to briefly listen to the highlights of this interview just to provide some context straight from the source itself. Then we'll talk about my thoughts and how I'm seeing this you know, as a shareholder of Facebook or even if you're not a shareholder, I was thinking about opening the position in the future. What are the potential implications for Facebook that we need to think about? I've seen a bunch of social networks, and it was substantially worse at Facebook than anything I'd seen before. Person after person after person has tackled this inside of Facebook and ground themselves to the ground. The version of Facebook that exists today is tearing our societies apart and causing ethnic violence around the world. Haugen told us the root of Facebook's problem is in a change that it made in 2018 to its algorithms, the programming that decides what you see on your Facebook news feed. And one of the consequences of how Facebook is picking out that content today is that it is optimizing for content that gets engagement or reaction. But its own research is showing that content that is hateful, that is divisive, that is polarizing, it's easier to inspire people to anger than it is to other emotions. Facebook has realized that if they change the algorithm to be safer, people will spend less time on the site, they'll click on less ads, they'll make less money. She secretly copied tens of thousands of pages of Facebook internal research. She says evidence shows that the company is lying to the public about making significant progress against hate, violence, and misinformation. One study she found from this year says, we estimate that we may action as little as three to five percent of hate and about six tenths of one percent of violence and incitement on Facebook, despite being the best in the world at it. We have evidence from a variety of sources that hate speech, divisive political speech, and misinformation on Facebook and the family of apps are affecting societies around the world. Of course, it's not breaking news to everyone that Facebook is at a conflict uh, with the users of its platform in terms of promoting content that they don't necessarily need to see or, or content that's not in its best interest. But what's different about this situation here is not only is this ex-employee just stating you know, all the things we probably already know about Facebook and Facebook's platform. We've had uh, ex-employees come out in, in even Netflix documentaries before slating the way that the platform you know, has been built and the way that it promotes content. But what she's actually doing here, what she's managed to do is, is get hold of hard evidence that suggests not only Facebook is aware of this fact, but that they are not doing anything to prevent it happening and that they've almost been turning a blind eye uh, to the situation in terms of not changing the algorithm or adapting it to protect the users of the platform from hateful content. Frances Haugen plans to testify before Congress this week. She believes the federal government should impose regulations. And so that's essentially if you're a Facebook shareholder or even a potential Facebook shareholder, that's what you're going to be concerned about. This whistleblower is presenting in front of uh, the Senate or testifying, as you'd say, and they've also been invited to do so in the UK and also with uh, European ministers as well. So Facebook were already in the limelight with uh, governments, especially in the EU and in the UK, who are looking at imposing certain regulations uh, on Facebook anyway. This will only amplify that situation. So if we're looking into the future for Facebook and, and maybe what we'd be concerned about off the back of this latest scandal, it's definitely the potential for regulation.
And so to get a bit more specific on that, just because we need to look at what the downside to regulation is for Facebook. I'm not saying Facebook is going to be regulated, but we need to think about if it's something we should fear uh, as investors. Now, there's two things I could see if Facebook were to be regulated and if there was a reason for them to be regulated that regulators or governments would want to change about the company. And maybe the first one is changes to its content algorithm, the way in which it promotes content to the users. And this, if it was changed for the worse, and like we hear Francis saying earlier, uh, if they were to cut out promotions for content that's hateful or, or would promote anger, this could potentially result in less user engagement. Now, the next thing would be changes in the way in which it targets users with ads and collects their personal data. These are things which users of the platform say they're quite uncomfortable with, with how much data Facebook and other companies actually have on them and, and how that's used uh, to promote ads to that user. Now, these two things are sort of what makes Facebook a, a high demand platform of such an effective platform for advertisers to advertise their products and services on. And it's essentially why Facebook is, is so effective. Now, if they were to be changed, and if they were to be changed for the worse in terms of the user engagement would go down and the targeted ads would be weaker, personal data collection would be weaker as well, it's likely that advertisers would pay less for the advertising space on Facebook's platform just because of weaker user engagement, less time spent on the platform, and less targeted advertisements. That could potentially lead to slower growth for Facebook. I'm not necessarily saying that this is going to happen, or I don't think it actually will happen, but it's something that we need to consider as investors. And if you had a certain thesis for Facebook that, that meant you know, this would get in the way of, of that thesis playing out, then it's definitely something that you need to consider. But I do want to balance this out because I do think regulation for Facebook uh, is something that would have some positives for the company and for shareholders and for the world around it. So to balance out this perspective on, on regulation, that investors should just be scared of regulation, I do want to point out that there could be some potential silver linings. And the first one is definitely that Facebook, through not necessarily regulation and government control, but with some regulation and rules, Facebook could become a more sustainable platform. And that would extend the life of the franchise, of the business, and boost its overall appeal, not just to uh, customers or users of the platform, but to the world around it, and paint it in a slightly different light than people see it at the moment. Then the second one, which sort of follows on from that point, is that because of these changes, new investors would see Facebook as an investable company now, once it changes its policies. I do think Facebook, although it's done very well, almost a trillion dollar market cap, uh, is a company sometimes that divides opinion in terms of who would invest in it and who just wouldn't bother taking a look at Facebook no matter how cheap it got just because of uh, the things that it does as a company and, and the effect that it has on the world around it. So maybe with regulation and to changes over time, Facebook could get past that point. Of course, this is all very hypothetical at this point. And if regulation was actually to become a reality, there's no guarantee that these are going to be the potential silver linings and the previous downsides or risks were going to be you know, the, the guaranteed downsides. This is just a thinking exercise to try and make us have a balanced view on the current situation. And again, it's a long shot that any of this uh, even happens, but it's definitely important to think about the potential positives that there is uh, to Facebook making changes to the platform. And although near-term impacts to the company uh, and the stock price, if, if regulation was to be a real thing, would be inevitable. In the long run, a more healthy and sustainable platform should benefit not just Facebook, but its shareholders and the users of the platform more importantly. And so that's one of the big reasons why I wouldn't be looking to, to panic sell my Facebook stock off the back of this news and even consider it really because I do think sooner rather than later, Facebook is going to have to make some changes that make the company and the way in which it operates more ethical. And I think over the long term, that's going to benefit me as a shareholder of the platform and uh, the company will reap the rewards of it in the future. It will be some form of delayed gratification. I may be delusional in that sense, but I'm a Facebook shareholder who you know, isn't against regulation or at least some rules being imposed on the way uh, in which the platform works, especially in the way in which it blocks uh, certain forms of content like hateful 
speech and, and things like that. I do think Facebook and a lot of the other social media platforms could be doing a lot more to try and cut that out and it wouldn't necessarily have any adverse effect on the platform. So again, I'm for those rules coming in. And it seems like investors, you know, reacting to this, it's down 15% the past month, but all tech stocks have, have been on a decline really the past month, or a lot of them have. Uh, since the week that it was announced, it's down only around 5 to 6%. So we haven't seen a huge drop. And I think a lot of that is that Facebook is already relatively cheap for the growth that it's spitting out. I know it's a a big market cap, 900 billion, but it's only selling at a PE ratio of around 23 times. Forward PE is, is way below 20 as well. So it's a relatively cheap stock in this market. So I don't think we're going to see a huge sell-off off the back of this scandal unless there is you know, some big announcements on regulation plans from even the EU uh, or the UK, not just the US. So that's something maybe to look out for. Just to finish off, I want to look at the valuation of Facebook. Like I said, I own Facebook and I did buy it around about 220 range. So it's gone up a fair bit from there. But I want to look at what the adverse effects could be if growth does start to slow down. Um, if we if we get slower growth than what we've actually forecasted over the next five years, what does that mean for the buy price of the stock and how overvalued or undervalued the stock is today based on the current share price? And so essentially what you're looking at here is uh, the five-year valuation model or DCF model that I did for Facebook, I think this was uh, at the end of last year. So it doesn't need much updating. I mean, this is a 2021 forecasted amount that we were going to see at the end of this year. They've already hit 100 billion in trailing 12 months revenue. So it's on track to actually outperform this at the moment. But what we had as a five-year growth rate was around 17.5%. That got us to uh, fair value based off a 15% discount rate of around $310 per share. Like I said, I bought down at around 220. So when I bought, I thought it was significantly undervalued. Now, even looking at this 17.5% growth rate, which is fairly conservative considering that growth is expected to be uh, around about 20% over the next three to five years. So I've been fairly conservative anyway, and it's showing that we're not far off a fair price for the stock today being a $320 per share. If we drop that growth rate down to around 15%, keep the margins because uh, we've just got the average five-year margins that they've done previously. We're expecting them to keep that. I actually think this is slightly off topic, but Facebook has the potential to actually expand its margins and be more profitable than it is at the moment because of all of the spend they have on product development. But that's in another video or a previous video. I'll leave a link down below. But back to the growth rate, which sort of aligns with this uh, regulation story. If we drop that down to 15%, we get a fair price for the stock today of around 282. And even if you drop it down to 10%, which is very unlikely Facebook is going to grow at a 10% CAGR over the next you know, five years, it's, it's in excess of 20% at the moment, very unlikely. But let's say they do hit you know, 10% because of all the headwinds they would receive through uh, regulation then. A fair value for the stock is still around $233 per share off a required rate of return of 15%. So that's the reason why I wouldn't be looking to sell the stock because even if growth drops significantly, I know this is all hypothetical at this point, but I would still be buying at a price that would let me reach my hurdle rate of return by judgment day in 2025. So that's just a quick glance at the valuation. If you ask me, I think Facebook is still a good bet. I think the destination for Facebook over the next four to five years is definitely a favorable one. I still think in 2024, 2025, 2026, Facebook will be one of the most dominant companies in the world. Hopefully, there would be some changes in the way in which they operate and changes to you know types of hateful content and, and hateful speech that goes out on the platform. I hope they do have a hand on that very soon. But in terms of the stock, I'm still very bullish and I'm still keeping my position and would look to add to Facebook if the price dropped below that 300 mark. But that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Hopefully, uh, it was a good review. Hopefully I gave you, you know, a fair and balanced view on the current situation for Facebook and you get to you know, make your own opinion up on, on what you think of the Facebook scandal of the whistleblower and what that means for Facebook stock if you are a shareholder. As always, I would appreciate if you could leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, comment down below, let me know what you think. I'd be keen to get all of your takes on it. And apart from that, I will see you all in the next video. Good luck with all of your investments.